choose challenge. Now, I'm not talking, you know, rock climbing necessarily, bungee jumping, skydiving. What I'm talking about is your own particular challenges. Now, this is where I'm gonna, let me share with you why I became a believer in the absolute necessity for challenging ourselves, for stepping outside our comfort zone. And this is the job that changed my life. I'm a sophomore, it's actually between freshman and sophomore in college. And I was living on my own. How many of you put yourself through school? Paid your way, okay, so you know what it's like to like have no money. <laughs> okay, it's always a good time. So um, I, I couldn't afford a car, so I hitchhiked everywhere. And this is back before it was totally psychotic to hitchhike. <laughs> and you know, doing that in sleet and rain and snow got old really fast, so I really had a desire to be able to get a car. But I worked the basic minimum wage, typical college student job, so there's no way I could go to school and get my car. Well, a friend of mine told me about a job he got the previous summer where he made three times of what I made. So I'm all about finding out about this job. And what it was, was working for a company, some of you might have seen these students come to your door called the Southwestern Company, where they get kid, uh, college students from all around the country and they send them to different parts of the country to sell books door to door, okay? Anybody have any of those students? Yeah, okay, I was one of those kids. So um, here's the problem. Thank God I saw the vision and what was possible and I didn't think about the reality. Because here's the situation. I was so painfully shy and my self-image was so fragile that if I, let's say um, I, I'm at the grocery store and I'm at the checkout counter, I wouldn't smile at the clerk because if they didn't smile back, I would feel crushed and rejected. That's how shaky my self-image was. Trust me, selling books door to door, having somebody not smile at you, least of your worries. That's a good day if that's all that happens. Fortunately, I had no clue what I was in for. We, go, we drive down to Nashville, Tennessee, go to sales school, then we get our assignment. We're going to Fort Wayne, Indiana. Drive up to Fort Wayne, Indiana. And we had made a promise that we were going to sell books bright and early Monday morning. We get there on Saturday. We don't have a place to stay. The company had given us two names of folks who said, you know, feel free to have your students call us. We call our person, my buddy and I, and it's a minister. So we said, you know, remember you had mentioned that, or you put your name in, a place to stay? He's like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. He goes, well, I don't have a place to stay, but you can talk to my, my nephew. So there's a little hesitation, but like, okay, great. So we call the nephew, and he's kind of the same hesitation. So I'm not sure what awaits us. Well, we get there, and then we discover why the hesitation. The nephew is running a halfway house for the chronically mentally ill. So like later, it's like, was there something about us that made them connect those dots in particular? So imagine, even though I was living on my own, I'd lived a pretty sheltered life. Imagine going from a sheltered life to living in a halfway house and I basically blocked that out. Um, I, the only memory I have is like a big cauldron of chili or spaghetti sauce. That's the only memory I have. And then working a job day in and day out that scares you to death. In fact, my first day on the job, I grew up in rural Connecticut, so you know, working class environment. My first uh, uh, location was this this upper middle class neighborhood. I'd never seen houses this big and fancy. So like, eh, knock on the door, the door opens, like, <laughs> and I was so scared, I went mute. I just, I just hand the book to the lady. And she's like, oh, okay. <laughs> That's how frightened I was. But here's what happened. That whole summer transformed my life because I realized we could either deal with the challenges of life by huddling in the corner and avoiding them or going out into the world and challenging ourselves and learning, I can handle it, bring it on. The other thing that I learned was the only way, at least my experience was, the only way we can do that and get stronger and more resilient is if we're constantly feeding ourselves empowering, inspirational material. And that's one of the things they drilled in us day in and day out. That was before, way before CDs, and we didn't, I think we might have had a couple of 
uh, audio cassette, so it's mainly reading every day. So to put something positive in your head. How many of you do that pretty much every day? It doesn't have to be every day. Yeah, makes a difference, doesn't it? Absolutely. Those of you who don't, highly recommend that you pick up a book or two, a CD or two, something that is always feeding you, and at the very least, counteracting all the negative victim messages and blaming messages and negative messages we get in, in media. And without the stepping outside the comfort zone and the constant feeding, I never would have survived that summer. And let me, let me make this practical. So how, do you, how can you make that practical? Again, it doesn't have to be extreme sports. Here's what I recommend related to Choose Challenge. Whenever you're faced with a situation that you can either do the inside your comfort zone choice or the step outside that feels a little anxiety producing, pick this one. I'll give you an example of how simple it can be. A couple of years back, I was doing a keynote at actually a, a local conference. It was in the Samoset. And um, uh, I was, it was a morning keynote, and so I, I got there the day before. And I checked online to see if there's any great Thai recipe. How many of Thai food fans? Okay, yeah. Always, wherever I travel, it's always like Thai food. So I found a Thai restaurant there. I could spend the you know dinner the night before, just kind of make sure I got everything right. Nice Thai meal. Everything's cool. Well, the afternoon I got there, a friend and colleague of mine comes up to me. She says, "Hey, just want to let you know there's an unbelievable restaurant downtown. I'm going to get together a bunch of people, and I'd like you to come." Now. Even though this is what I do for a living, I'm primarily an introvert, okay? So fellow introverts or fellow despised chit chat, small talk, okay? Are you with me with this? How exciting is it to spend hours with complete strangers coming up with chit chatty things to talk about? Root canal is a better option? Well, okay, that's where I am. But here's the, here's the thing. As, even though I'm thinking, oh, no, I don't think so, I'm thinking, wait a minute, choose challenge. The only way I can become more comfortable in these kind of situations is if I put myself in those. But then I'm thinking, yeah, but the Thai meal, the quiet, you know, I know I'm gonna like that. And then it's like, no, the only way you grow, step outside your comfort zone. Yeah, but you know. So I'm sort of becoming like Gollum in Lord of the Rings. Remember that? Like nasty hobbitses and oh good hobbit, you know, going that back and forth. So finally I'm like, I think I'm gonna do it. Then she comes up to me an hour or two later, she goes, oh, I wanna let you know, by the way, um, I was able to secure a courtesy van, so if you want a drink, you don't have to worry about drinking and driving. Now, put yourself in my shoes, fellow introverts. What are you thinking? If courtesy, you're not gonna be driving yourself, courtesy van, what does that mean? Trap, no, <laughs> exactly, and the very, reason that it was, that made it even more anxiety producing, I said, I'm going to do it. And I did it. And actually it ended up being one of the most fun times I've ever had at a conference. Now, so choosing challenge, choosing the, uh, I'm a little anxious about this. Now, if it had crashed and burned, like it turned out to be dreadfully boring and awkward, you know what I would have done? Retail therapy. Okay? <laughs> would have bought myself something. And the reason for that is you want to teach your brain it's a good thing to step outside your comfort zone. Because you think about it, we got taught that failure is a bad thing. You know, when you think about trying new things, we, through responses that we've got from other people and how we, and we learn to, to talk to ourselves about when things go wrong or take a risk, we get rejected. We condition our brain to think it's a bad thing. And it's like, no, really, it's a good thing because we're, that means we're learning. So buy something for yourself. If you go for it, it doesn't go well. So choose challenge. Now, good old William James, father of American psychology, brilliant individual. Be systematically heroic and little unnecessary points. And so that's where just day-to-day -day practicing on those little things where you can, okay, here's another one that I'll do sometimes. You can't find the receipt and you want to return an item. How many of you ever just kind of sucked it up like, I'm not going to bother, it's not worth the hassle? Isn't that true? Yeah. 
the very reason that I don't want to deal with the hassle and the discomfort is why I'll do it. Because that's the only way I'll become more comfortable with that awkward situation, unless it's like L.L. Bean. So here's, here's what I recommend to put this into action. Pay attention to the little fork in the road, whether you take the easy way or the kind of anxious way. And here's what it's like. It's like pumping iron, you get stronger, you pump iron. It's like pumping anxiety. The more we pump anxiety, the stronger our courage and confidence and adaptability muscles become. It takes practice. Anybody practice yoga here? All right. Aren't there things that you can do now that in the beginning you thought, no way? Can't do that? I finally can do a shoulder stand. And I remember, like, whoa, well, you know, I'll picture this upside down, whoa, and just like falling over and just flipping up against a wall seemed really freaky. Just like being good at any sport, it takes practice. And so I really want to challenge you if you, and sorry for the blinking, I've got something in my eye here. I really want to challenge you that if you're serious about lowering your stress level, increasing your energy level, being able to face change, challenge, and uncertainty with more of a bring it on attitude, then you'll need to practice in order to make that happen. And especially those, those the self-talk and the explanatory style. I mean, I've been teaching this for 25 years now, and I still catch myself all the time. Like, whoops, okay, change how you're explaining this. No mind reading, no fortune telling. 